there welcome to my channel my name is linda i've got a lot of fun diy home decor crafts projects crafts projects <laughs> i've got a lot of fun diy home decor projects for you today so what are we waiting for let's get started Today we'll be working on last minute 4th of July home decor using mostly Dollar Tree supplies. So let's get started with project number one. For this project, you're going to need two of these or maybe three or maybe even four. <laughs> Depends on what you end up doing. I'm going to actually use the glass from two of these candle holders and I'm going to use a candle holder, a separate one from Dollar Tree and some Gorilla Glue. And what I've done on one of the glass, I've already got it on there because it says to put the Gorilla Glue on and wait two minutes. And then I'm going to seal both glasses together. We're going to set that aside. I'm using Debbie's Design Diary DIY White Swan Chalk Paint. And we're going to come in on this candlestick and I'm going to use a pouncy brush and I'm going to pounce it on and heat set it in between. And I'm going to do that with two coats all the way through. And we're going to be doing this process on like almost everything today. So I'm not always going to show this entire thing here. Once I've heat set it, I'm going in for a second coat. I'll heat set it again. And then once it's complete here, I'll just kind of show you what it looks like. Skip ahead. And this is what it looks like. Love that look. Just a real nice, small, textured look. All right, so now on the glass, it's set and ready to go. I'm just coming in and I'm marking this glass into thirds. I need three thirds here. And then what I want to do, once I've got that mark, I'm going to come around and just tape the center portion of that. And for today's project, I'll be using Dixie Belle Yankee Blue, Rustic Red, and then the Debbie's Design Diary White Swan Chalk Paint. So on one end, I'm coming in with that Rustic Red. I'm doing the pouncing motion. I'll heat set it in between, and I'll do that two times to get a nice, good textured coat, just like we did on the candlestick. Then I'm going to come in on the other side with that Yankee Blue and do the same thing. Pounce it on, heat set in between, and then do it again. So we've got two nice coats. Perfect. That's just what it looks like. And I'm going to take the paint off the center, painting tape off the center, and then retape it on either end, leaving the center exposed. And then we're going to come in with that white swan chalk paint. Same process. Pouncy brush it on. One coat, heat set in between. Another coat, heat set. And then I'm going to remove the tape. And this is the beautifulness that it is. No worries. We're going to cover that center seam. I'm going to use these wood beads from Dollar Tree. And we're going to come in. I'm going to use two for blue, two white, and two red. Pouncy motion. I will do this on all our beads today. Heat setting in between a couple of coats. Just so we get that nice texture like we did on the candlestick. Okay. And again, I'm kind of just showing this at first. Because, you know, to save a little bit of time, this video is already pretty long. You know, we don't need to see this entire process through each project. Once everything is done and I've heat set it in between, I'm going to use these stars. These came off of signs from Dollar Tree last year. I'm going to use these on every project today. I think I picked a sign last year. It had four of these. I bought the signs just to get the stars off. I wish they made just bags of these to buy. But if you don't have them, here's the beautiness of it with the pouncy brush heat setting in between. You could use like wood stars and do the same process. But I just love kind of that 3D look of these metal stars. I'm going to go ahead now. I've got using a white twine here. I get at Walmart. I'm adding my beads. Setting that aside, I'm going to take some more of that white twine. And I'm going to wind it through the center so we're covering our seam. Using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue today, as usual, my go-to glue for this. And I'm going to wrap this twine around so I've got three nice, you know, windings around the center here. Nobody, nobody knows our seam unless they look on the inside. Once I get to the end, of course, I'll cut that little part off. And glue that in so it's nice. And I kind of tuck the ends real close together in the center. Then my white twine is now in a bow. And I'm just kind of, you know, knotting the end after each bead and uh, cutting off the excess here. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue this bow to the center there where our twine ends meet to cover that up. And then I'm going to take this star and add a little glue on that and put it right in the center of our bow. Now for the candle, I don't know if I'd burn it, but you could use a regular candle here or use a battery operated one here. So you could have one lit, of course, and that makes this one complete. Let's look at an option of one single candle. I've taped it off and did the whole process on one candle, just like 
the one we just did. But now we need to do something with this base. So I'm coming back in just like we did on the candlestick on the other one. Pouncing motion, heat setting in between, doing two coats so we get that nice texture all the way around. That way, I mean, I bought four of these when I started. And if you only have a couple of them and you want to do two single ones, this is a perfect way to do it. This is what it looks like all textured, the base. Now on the first one, we did three beads per strand. We're going to do just two and separate it into thirds. I know. It's only two beads. If it was more than two beads, I'd be like, I'm out. <laughs> but it's only two beads. I'm using a little bit of washi tape here. You could cut down some painter's tape nice and thin. Tape through the center. And I'm going to do a pouncy motion red and blue on either end. Heat setting it. And then I will, uh, once I heat set it, I'll pull off that washi tape in the center. And then I've cut down some smaller strips here of painter's tape, and I'm going to tape off those red and blue sections. I'm going to actually leave kind of little handles on this because I'm going to have to be able to hold this when I'm heat setting it. Um, both ends are taped off. I'm going to use that Debbie's Design Diary White Swan, and we're going to texture it through the center of our bead. Here comes our heat setting. See, that tape handle makes it nice to hold, huh? Pull that tape off, and we have two really cute beads. Again, if it was any more than that, I wouldn't do this process. It takes so much time, I'm impatient. <laughs> Using the macrame string from Dollar Tree, and I've got my metal star already ready to go, just like we did on the first project. I'm going to add my beads to a macrame that I've tied in a bow, and I'm going to add a separate piece and just go one around the center of our candle so that it matches. I mean, you might want to make just two single candles, or you want to make two tall candles or you might want to do what I did here make one tall and one short candle as we're working on the tall and short actually look kind of cute together so using that Fabri-Tac glue again just one time around with this macrame twine I love this stuff I wish I would have got more and then we're going to glue our bow to the center of that because I went back for more and they're out we're going to glue our star to the center of that bow and then we're going to just, you know, tie off our excess, whatever length we want, knot it at the end so the bead doesn't fall off, cut that end off, and it's so easy just to twist, and we've got a cute little ratty end there. I'll do that on the other side. Same thing. Cut the excess off, twist. We're going to add in our cute little electric tea light here. Boom, turn it on, and this project is complete. Let's move on to project number two. For this project, I'm gonna use one of these from Dollar Tree. And for the back, I've actually got one of these little easels. I took off another project, but a sweet friend of mine, Ms. Mona, um, she gave us a tip in my Facebook group. If you wanna join that, I'll have a link down in the description box. She uses these little chalkboard easels. Of course, she uses like a horizontal or a vertical one and just glues them on the back to have that stand. You could use one like this vertical and just have little legs showing, doesn't matter, but that's an option for you. Thank you, Ms. Mona, for sharing that. Taking that uh, black piece off the center, saving it because we're going to use it. And then I'm going to sand around the edges of this so a little bit of wood shows. And for our uh, scrapbooking paper today, these are the three sheets I'm going to use. You might recognize two of them from last week's uh, video. And I'm just cutting down my papers to fit my project. I trace them and then I cut them down to fit about oh, an eighth of an inch short maybe a quarter of an inch all the way around. Because if you look down at the board down below, you can see how much I've kind of sanded off the edge. That's how when we go to paint that later, a little bit of paint will show around our papers here. I'll show you what it looks like, just like this. See? And I'll go ahead and do the same with the bottom piece. So it fits nicely with the other one. Nice and cute. And then, of course, I will cut my striped paper to fit this center piece as well. 
Once I've got everything cut, I like to take all my papers to my sewing machine. Those who are new with me, I love to add that texture to it. I think it gives it a nice little farmhouse appeal to it. My machine likes size 10 or 11 needle. If you're using machine and the holes are too big, you might wanna go down to a nine cotton or polyester thread and my tension is set on for a nice straight stitch. We're gonna bring in Dixie Belt chalk paint in the color drop cloth for this project. I'm painting the little metal star again. Told you we use one on every project. And then I'm going to paint around the little easel part. Just a couple of coats. On the easel and the uh, tag and the centerpiece, I just use regular paint brush. Um, but the star, of course, I pouncy brush that on to get that nice texture. Here I come around on our tag, and I do paint the back completely as well. I don't think I show it. Oh, no, I do. You'll see that later. Then I'm coming in with the beads and our pouncy brush to get our texture on for the red, for the white, <laughs> and the blue. Same colors as we used in the last project. We'll use these uh, red and blue same colors. The drop cloth is different, of course. We use the white swan and the other one. Then I'm coming in. My papers are all sewn, of course. You can see open into my scissor blades, and I'm scraping along the edges to give us some nice little texture in here. You add that little bit of rustic feel into uh, the piece today. And if you don't like to sew or you don't want to do this part, it's optional. It'll look fine without it. This piece I've done on my Cricut Design Space cut vinyl quote out. Yes, I have a free printable for you. The link will be in my description box to my blog. And then you could just print this out onto your scrapbook paper before you cut it to fit that center piece on the tag. I was going to add my glue to the back of this and then I realized I forgot to punch corners on it. So I'm holding it very gently using my Memory Keeper's corner punch and cutting around the corners and taking my scissors and make sure I distress in those corners I just punched out. And then go ahead and glue that down. And I'm just using an emery board here and kind of just distressing the edge around this piece and around the uh, outside edge of our sign or our tag here that will become a tag sign when we're done. And now I'm just laying my paper down, not gluing it yet. I'm just going to mark where that hole is and then use my crocodile hole punch here and punch a little hole, of course. And then we'll go ahead and get that glued down because I still want it to look like a tag when we're done. We're just going to have a horizontal tag. And then I'll glue down my uh, bottom piece here. And now I've got some washers here. I have small and large washers. I just get them in the hardware section in a hardware store. I've painted one, as you can see here, with the pouncy brush motion, just like I did on the star, bringing out that macrame cotton again. Of course, glue down your washer. And then once that's set up, you can go ahead and start gluing down our uh, macrame cotton twine here. And I go just a couple times around gluing it around all the sides here. That way it stays in place nicely there. You can see my back's all painted and finished off. Get to the end there, kind of meet it in the middle, tuck those little ends in. And now we've got another piece of that macrame twine in a bow. We're gonna add our beads onto it as well, just like in the last projects. Perfectly wonderful. Yep, still, as I said the first time, wish I would have got some more of this twine. <laughs> Going to knot off the end and cut off the excess and then kind of, you know, smoosh the end around to make it look a little ratty and rustic and cute. Do that on both sides. What do I always say? Nice and easy, of course. Want to make sure I've got the same kind of length. I'm just a little bit uh, compulsive that way. <laughs> and we're going to glue on our... Uh, piece right here, our little title piece, and then glue on our bow right in the center to cover the ends of those twines. And then we're going to bring in our metal star. And I made all these projects today have the same similar feature, so you could put them all in a nice little vignette if you wanted to, okay? Um, and then I'm going to bring in and get my easel screwed on here. Nice and done. And then I'm going to bring in a piece of twine here. I'm going to bring them together and knot off the end. And that makes this project complete.
Let's move on to our last project, number three. For this project, I'm going to be using these three items from Dollar Tree. And you could choose to use three of one or three different ones as this one. This one had the flowers and stuff on I took off. Your choice, you know, how you want to do it or what you have available. And then I'm just taking kind of the tips off. I'm going to just like cut the tips off of every one of them and make them into little tags. Although I do something at first and I leave it in here and then... Um, I show it, but then I change it. Anyway, so I cut all the things off and I've sanded everything, distressed around the edges, I even took the little tip off that one house. We're gonna use Dixie Belt chalk paint and the color drop cloth and we're gonna go around the edges of all of these. I will cover with paper front and backs of everything. But yeah, like I said, you could use three of these or three of the others or three of the houses, it doesn't matter. I just wanted like three different things. And my intention here when I started out was to make these look like a fun version of firecrackers, July 4th firecrackers, but then I decided I didn't like that. So that's what I changed. But as I said, I do leave it in here. So I've got those painted. Now I'm coming in on the stars. I'm going to use two, three metal stars actually on this project and then all the beads needed. And I'm pouncing all the paint and everything on, heat setting in between, doing two coats, just like we did on all the other projects today. We want everything to kind of look cohesive, like I said, so you could put them all in a little vignette if you wanted. Or if you separated them around your house, you know, you look in certain areas, you'll have kind of that matchy throughout, you know, everything that you're decorating. Those set aside, I'm bringing in, I've traced all my uh, little house shapes here, front and back, and cut them about a quarter inch short or so all the way around and I'm coming in with the sewing machine and sewing all of these papers up. I do add two more pieces of paper later and I'll show you when we get to that. Okay, and it's to cover the back of that kind of shallow house tag, you know. Anyway, everything's sewn up, distressed around the edges. Adding that little bit of a rustic look in there. You all know I like that. Once I started sewing and doing this rustic, the rustic kind of came in for my scrapbooking days that I still do, of course. The sewing kind of started in there too, but now if I don't do this to every, you know, papers I use on projects, it just looks really bare to me, but you don't have to. So in the end result here, after everything was painted, I distressed everything. Now here comes what I left in but decided not to do. I'm using a, a drill here and drilling some tiny little holes in the top of all three of my pieces here. Here's where my firecracker idea came in. I think just when I got done looking, I'm like, nope, I think it's going to look better if you use just more round wood or square wood. I try to take liberties with the shapes. So I'm coming in with my crocodile tool here. I have two different crocodile tools, and I'm going to use some lights on this. And my lights have 14 bulbs on them, so I am hole punching in a uh, order, random, not quite a random order, hole punching 14 holes here. You have to be careful when you are punching your holes and stuff out that where you place them. And I'll show you that here in just a little bit. So here's all my 14 holes punched and ready to go. I'm going to lay it on my wood piece here. I'm using the house with the shallow backside, marking all my holes. That way I can come in with my drill and I can drill through all my holes here. And I just chose the drill bit that matched the size of like the hole punch. And of course, I had to try it on a scrap piece of wood here that the lights fit through it. Now I'm laying the back piece that I'm going to cover on the back inside there, laying that in there. I'm going to mark all those holes so that I can go in and punch the holes out on the paper. Okay, a little bit of a process here to add some lights, but I just thought it would add a little something extra to this piece here. Get those all punched out. And then once I do that, I'm gonna glue both pieces on. Yeah, I wanted to cover that pink paper up, so that's why I'm putting the paper on the back. Cover that up. You guys know I like my front and backs finish. Put my front paper on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just skip to, we'll come back to that in a minute. I'm gonna just skip to adding all my papers to the fronts and backs of my other wood pieces here. Second one done, moving into the third one. Perfectly cute. And now I'm going to use, going back to the first house, this little round um, sander thing. All of a sudden I forgot what it is. Because I'm going to go into each of my holes and I'm going to just smooth 
file, round file, I'm going to smooth off all my holes so that it smooths off all the paper and the inside of the holes and everything and looks really nice. Now, before I move on, I've taken some of that drop cloth paint and mixed it with water. I'm using my fan brush. I dip it in, wipe the excess off, and then tap the fan brush on my pieces, and I'm going to splatter front and back side. So here's where I come in with some wire, and I'm going to make the little firecracker tips. I'm winding it around a large paintbrush here. You could still do this. I just decided that trying to take liberties with the shape, didn't like it. Do three of those, and then I end up gluing these in to those little holes I drilled earlier. I do it on the second one, I just skip it. We're gonna move to the third one here. This is what it looks like. The third one, because it's shallow on the inside, I glue it in and once that's dry, I take some pliers and kind of twist it up to the top so it stays in. Set that aside and using macrame twine here, I cut off enough, long enough for each piece to wrap around and then tie into a bow. Probably like, I don't know, 24 inches minimum, probably a lot more than that. Adding my beads onto each one, red, white, and blue, just like all the other projects. And then we're gonna go ahead and start gluing these onto our pieces. And I glue around the back and the sides and then come to the front. You're definitely gonna wanna glue on the sides of the uh, one we're gonna add lights in, for sure, if you don't glue on the sides of these other ones. Get it around and then tie it into a bow, of course. Do this process on all three of them. And then I'm gonna you know, glue that center bow down a little bit and then we're going to go ahead and uh, tie our uh, ends where we want them to be and fray out those edges. Let our beads hang a little bit, long or as short as you want them. Perfect. Did I say it? This is like my third time. Wish I would have got more of that macrame string. <laughs> and then we're going to go ahead and glue our star in the center. And then we're going to continue on to the next piece doing the same thing. At this point, yes, my little firecracker stems are still in. I actually almost made these traditional using Dollar Tree supplies that are like square shape, but I thought I just want to try a little bit of a different look. But every time I kept walking by, I'm like, there's just something I'm not liking. And then I'm like, it's those firecracker stems. So <laughs> anyway, um. You're going to have to let me know in the comments down below if I did the right or made the right decision by changing them from firecrackers to tags, as you'll see in a little bit. Anyway, just finishing this one up, getting our beads and all that on and doing our little tails. We're going to go ahead and glue the star on. Both of these two tags we just did, I am going to add something to them a little bit later, but we're going to set them aside and we're going to move on to this last one. Make sure here when you're gluing your twine or macrame string on, you glue it all the way on the sides. Those sides need to be glued down fully, not just a little, you know, dot of glue. Okay, because we want to make sure that's nice and stable because um, what we're going to put on the back needs to be able to come in and out of that string. And you'll see that, of course. So finishing up here again, adding our last little bit. And now I'm adding in, this is just a mini Christmas ornament I get at Walmart every year and I've painted it up. I've decided I was just going to do the star in the middle, but decided to add this. So I'm putting some papers on both sides of it. I cut it to fit the tag. A little bit peeking around the edges like usual. And now we're going to get into the lights again. I didn't show you this at first because I wanted to show you it all together. Uh, I didn't show you why I was punching holes. But when you go to punch your holes, make sure you are aware of where your holes are so that your battery pack will fit in there like this. If you don't do that, like here, if you just wanted to lay it down, see, I wouldn't have room to get the little bulbs into those holes. So be aware of that. Maybe lay your battery pack down and then kind of mark where you want your holes around it. Okay. So just tucking my bulbs in, they fit nice and tight and secure right in there. I don't need to glue them in or anything. And now for the back, you know, I talked about we're going to need something to slide in and out of that rope. So this is just a really thick piece of cardboard. I trace that uh, house shape, you know, to cut it out and then trace to uh, my papers, of course, to fit this. I'm not allowing any peekaboo around the edges. My papers are just going end to end around both sides of this. We'll set that aside. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add the tag now. I'm just using a bulb pin, light bulb, bulb pin. You can find them on Amazon. Our Walmart carries them in the sewing section. Amazon, you can get different colors. Um, and then I'm going to add this homeward. Now, these come from this. It's called Quote Chips by Tim Holtz. You can find them in the scrapbooking section of any major craft store. I'm sure you can find them on Amazon. So I'm putting the word home here. 
just seeing where I would want it to go against the heart. And I decided I didn't want the heart that light color. So I uh, painted it red and cut some scrapbook paper out to put over the top that matches one of the other tags. And then we'll just go ahead and glue that down as well. And now I'm adding two layers of cardboard here to the back of our tag. And then that way we can glue it down to the front of our house. So it lays nice and level and of course doesn't move around. On the other two, these are the last little things I talked about earlier. I'm adding some words here. I think I'll kind of go in with home and 4th of July celebration. And now we're to where we take the wires out. Yay! <laughs> I filled the holes and everything in with some wood filler. And then I'm just going to come in and, you know, fix that up a little bit with some paint. And then I'm going to add some of these washers again. Too small, too large like I did the other tag. I painted them the same way with the pouncy brush. Um, heat setting in between a couple of coats and I'm just marking where these are going to go. I lucked out on this one because obviously I had my holes punched before I knew I was going to put a <laughs> washer on it, but it just fits. You just see that light bulb peeking out. <laughs> Got all my holes drilled on this and I'm going to put that around and, or glue that down and then I'm going to add the holes into my other two tags. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and glue these smaller washers down. Washer number one <laughs> and washer number two. Perfect. I'm going to add some twine here on the larger tag first. We'll, of course, put twine in all the other ones. I just wanted you to see I had just enough room for that light bulb. Woohoo! Put the twine in. Before I do anything with it, I'm just going to lay my battery pack in here. No need to glue it. And then we're going to add our little cardboard back piece here. So this is why I said you want to glue that twine fully on the sides because this back piece needs to be able to slide in and out so that you can access the battery pack and everything. Okay, and then of course hides all that stuff. Take my twine here, both pieces together, and just tie a knot with both strings. Adding the rest of my twine, we're gonna do the same thing. Tie a knot with uh, both strings and just let it hang. Cut off the excess. And then once I get this last one tied and ready to go, this project is complete. So I hope you enjoyed all of the projects I made today. Now I know these are last minute and 4th of July is just a couple days away, but I had just a few more ideas I had to get out. So I hope it was worth your time last minute watching these 4th of July projects. Please give this video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Number one, let me know which project was your favorite. And number two, did I make the right choice in turning these uh, three little ideas here from firecrackers to tags. <laughs> I really need to know if I did that right. If you're, this is your first time here and you just walked in and you're kind of checking things out, if you're digging what you saw today, make sure you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another project from me. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. No matter what you're going through, it's not the end. The pain you feel, the frustration, the tears, the anger or disappointment, it's not the end. There's hope on the other side. If you are far from Jesus, he's waiting there for you, arms open, willing to accept you for who you are. He accepts all of you. Even if you feel unworthy, full of shame, hiding secrets, you've done horrible things, said mean words, treated people wrong, Jesus still loves and accepts you. Jesus made you. He knows what's inside your heart and mind, and he's willing to be with you no matter what, as long as it's your choice as well to turn to him. You are not the mistakes you've made or the labels put on you by other people. You are who God says you are. Perhaps you've been with Jesus for a long time, but have a circumstance right now that has made you feel extreme hurt and disappointment, that you don't know how to be or what to do. Jesus understands your circumstance. He understands your pain. He was human once. Together, you can conquer anything. Together, you can figure out what to do next, where to go, how to find your light again. He has a path for you. So no matter where you are in life or no matter what your circumstance, this is your day to let go of those things that keep holding you back from the future that God has for you. Today is the day for a new hope and a new beginning. Today is the day to allow God to help you. If you want to change your life, you have to change your story. Open up your heart and let him in. Allow God to fill the broken places with his love, peace, and compassion that he has for you. Find your new beginning. Feel your new hope. Claim your new healing. 
look forward to a new future. If you want to win this day, you have to flip the script and call on Jesus. What have you got to lose? I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.